So today we're going to discuss the idea of supernova happening in the vicinity of planet Earth. How dangerous would it be if there was a supernova within approximately 300 light years away from our planet? And although today we're actually pretty certain that none of the nearby stars are going to go supernova in the next million years, based on many observations around the solar system, we also know that there are signs that such supernova definitely happened. For example, the famous local bubble that we've discussed many times before was extremely likely produced by multiple supernova within the last 15 million years. And in case you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's essentially an extremely large bubble around the solar system that seems to contain a slightly lower density compared to the rest of the galaxy, as if something blew away a bunch of material, such as for example from a supernova explosion. And this is actually hundreds of light years across, so this is not a small feature. But similar bubbles exist elsewhere, so we know that this is actually pretty common. A few videos in the description explore this idea a little bit more. But specifically in this video, I actually wanted to focus on this recent paper that discovered something really surprising. And the title here kind of tells us everything. Earth's atmosphere protects the biosphere from nearby supernova. Or in essence, the discovery is a little bit surprising. It suggests that the nearby supernova are not actually as dangerous as we always thought. And so, hello info person, this is Anton. Let's discuss the idea of nearby supernova and the hazards to planet Earth, and of course talk about some of the evidence from previous explosions that might have actually caused extinction events on the planet. But first, let's start with the solar system. So, it just so happens that we actually got super lucky. The sun is relatively quiet and does not actually vary its brightness or its emissions by more than 0.1% over many, many years. And that is quite unusual compared to other stars that are usually either variable or extremely explosive. As a matter of fact, many red dwarfs are actually flare stars and they produce enormous flares that have a power to strip everything from a typical terrestrial planet. There will be no atmosphere, no liquid water, practically nothing. And some of the recent discoveries from a lot of nearby stars, specifically focusing on X-ray observations, discovered that a lot of them are very active, making Earth just a little bit more lucky than other planets. But surviving a solar flare is one thing. What about a supernova? And the thing is, for both of these events, terrestrial planets would very likely have extremely similar defenses, mostly the ozone layer. The upper layer, responsible for shielding us from a lot of dangerous radiation, basically blocking up to 99% of all of the UV light coming from the sun and from everywhere else. And so for our planet, that's actually one of the main reasons life was able to evolve here for 4.5 billion years and has been doing pretty fine, at least for now. But based on statistical observations, every million years or so, there should be at least one star exploding within about 300 to 400 light years away from planet Earth. A lot of the statistics is once again based on the observations from that local bubble. Moreover, we even have signs of core collapse supernova sending their elements to planet Earth in the last 2.6 million years. Here we're talking about elements such as iron 60, which is a radioactive iron that can only be produced by supernova. And actually quite a few of these sediments have been discovered, some approximately 2.6 million years ago, but some approximately 8 million years ago. Suggesting that these events are relatively frequent. But obviously, the closer we are, the more dangerous it would be. But the question is of course, how dangerous? And more importantly, has it actually caused extinction events? Well, today this particular question is still debatable, but there are a few papers, including one from just a few years ago, that suggest that at least one of the extinction events, the late Devonian extinction event, the one that made creatures like Tiktaalik right here go extinct, possibly happened 370 million years ago because of the supernova. Likewise, another event approximately 250 million years ago seems to show unusual UV damage signs in things like, for example, pollen or various seeds. This was the end Permian mass extinction, and something here, for some reason, caused the ozone layer to disappear once again. And so, in essence, in a lot of these cases, 
we seem to have these events where the extinction seems to correlate with major increases in the UV light, very likely the result of the collapse of the ozone layer around the planet. And one of the major ways we think ozone layer can disappear is because of a nearby supernova. Specifically, various gamma rays and cosmic rays can easily deplete the ozone layer, especially if they arrive in huge amounts, which in essence would look something like this. A nearby supernova, within about 300 light years away from us, would produce intense cosmic rays and possibly even a gamma ray burst, which would then dramatically affect the chemistry of the upper atmosphere, first of all causing a decrease in the ozone layer, but then also possibly causing cloud condensation, leading to a climate cooling. And what's really interesting is that in 2022 we actually detected the most powerful gamma ray burst we've ever observed, and even though it was about 2 billion light years away from us, it actually did change the atmosphere just a little bit. You can actually learn about this unusual event in one of the videos in the description, but that was in a completely different galaxy far, far away. Imagine if this happened right here. And so the effects might be much, much higher. All of this might strip the ozone layer completely and dramatically increase the cloud coverage, dropping the temperature for many, many years. Or at least so we thought. This has been the assumption for many years and it was essentially based on some evidence and a lot of modeling. But in this new study, the scientists did something a little bit more advanced. They once again modeled planet Earth by using what's known as EMAC or Earth Systems Model and Atmospheric Chemistry, but in this case focusing on supernova explosions. And mostly explosions within about 300 light years away from us. And the main focus was first the stratospheric loss of ozone, mostly because of higher ionization coming from the supernova, but also of course that cloud condensation that can actually lead to climate change. With the assumption being that the overall ionization rates would be approximately 100 times higher than what we have right now, and it would also last for many, many years. And the results were kind of surprising. So first of all, some ozone layer was lost, mostly over the poles, but it was actually much less than present day loss because of human activity, or essentially the ozone hole produced because of the supernova simulation was not as dramatic as the loss from the infamous CFCs, the chlorofluorocarbons with the overall loss being approximately 10% or even less. And in terms of global cooling, there will be some change, but it would not be dangerous or dramatic, even though in some locations, such as the Pacific or the Southern Oceans, the overall cloud seeding effect would increase by up to 100%. Despite of that though, it would not actually change the temperatures by that much. At least, if it happened today. But as you probably know today, we actually have quite a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere, which then leads to even more ozone produced in the upper atmosphere. But what about 400 million years ago? During the Precambrian, the oxygen levels were much, much lower, going down to about 2%. So maybe during this time, supernova could be much more dangerous. Naturally, because of less ozone, we would get less protection, and so the ecosystem could be a lot more vulnerable. But even during these particular times, the ozone loss was only about 10 to maybe 25%, and surprisingly, in some locations, the ozone actually even went up. Once again, highlighting that these effects from various supernova would unlikely to have any major impact on pretty much most of this advanced early life on Earth 400 million years ago. With the overall conclusion from the paper basically being that supernova might not actually be as dangerous as we thought, at least the ones that happen every million years. And it's actually quite unlikely that any caused any mass extinction on our planet. Moreover, the magnetosphere and the atmosphere of the planet seems to basically protect us from most things out there. And it's very likely the main reason life survived here for over 4 billion years. And so as long as supernova don't actually happen too close, we should actually be okay for a very, very long time, unless the supernova happens within about 30 light years away from us. Now in that case, it could be catastrophic, but the chance of that happening is not very high. It might actually happen maybe every few hundred million years, or possibly even every one billion years, but right now there's just not enough evidence to suggest either way. And so the overall surprising conclusion is that, even though supernova are actually dangerous, 
it looks like planet Earth is very resilient and is able to protect us from a lot of dangers of outer space. With the ozone layer being one of these major layers of protection. So definitely quite an intriguing research and some really cool discoveries. But I'm sure we'll have more discoveries in the next few years, so make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. On that note, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.